No, so listen, tonight, church, I have to be honest with you, I tried studying all day long. <laughs> and um, it was not going to happen. God had other plans. God had other things going on. And, and that's, um, I, I believe it, it approved to be the Lord's, the Lord's will. Father, we thank you for tonight, and wow, God, we thank you that you're enthroned in heaven above. I so appreciate, we appreciate that you are so high, you are so lifted up, you are so beyond any tower of Babel, any slingshot, any internet, any satellite, any planet, any solar system any universe, you're beyond all that. And we are so glad that you are so out of reach from evil. It can't reach you. It can't affect you. You're under no threat. Hallelujah. Tonight, the kingdom of God is under no threat. We praise you for that. <laughs> and at the same time, how is it that you can be so close to us and in our hearts and in our thoughts, you are awesome in all of your ways. And so tonight, as family comes together, we ask you, Lord, to sanctify our time to the honor of your Son and, Lord, to the glory of your kingdom. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So church, listen. It is normal for you to be going through anxiety. It's humanly normal. And our nation's going through it. Anxiety. It's when we experience something that we begin to view or believe that it's beyond our influence. It's beyond our ability. And to be honest with you, anxiety is flawed from the beginning. <laughs> because you assume and I assume that the situation is something that I can take care of. Uh, I got this. And last night, God reminded us of who's in charge. And it's not Donald Trump and it's not Joe Biden. It's not an elephant or a donkey. God's in charge. But why is there a sense of anxiety all across the land? There is a sense of anxiety and people are dealing with that and coping with it. I get it. And it's honest. But then the Bible turns around and reminds us, why does it say this? Because we're prone to anxiety. In Philippians 4, 6, the Bible says, be anxious. <laughs> yes, you are correct. But in everything, yeah, this is, that's, this is the key. By prayer and supplication, okay? With thanksgiving, that's the qualifier. We are to pray. And we are to make our supplications before God, but there's a prerequisite. There's a qualifier to the prayer that's to go up, and that is you're to be thankful. Think of this now. Let your request be made known to God. That doesn't mean tweet about it. That doesn't mean Facebook it. That doesn't mean anything else but to tell God about it. How much, listen, don't answer. How much anxiety have you gone through today, last night, or any time in life, and you communicated it, but not upward? You didn't upload it to the only one who can do anything about it. Amen. We're humans, there's no doubt about it. We get anxious. And the scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, uh, 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will garrison. The word is guard, garrison. It, 
It's awesome. The word garrison is, imagine a Roman legion pulling up and they dismount from their horses or the footmen break rank and they circle around you. That's the picture in the first century mind. All of the power of the Roman Empire gathers around you and they're facing, listen, they're facing out away from you. Their back is toward you. They'd be... It'd be okay to be a little anxious if a Roman legion was facing you, circling you. That would not be a good day. But when they come, the word implies that they put their back to you and they're guarding you against the world. God's Bible tells us that his peace that he gives surpasses human abilities to understand. That's good. And he will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hearts is our emotion. Minds is our thoughts. Our thoughts are driven by our emotions. And it's, it's the proverbial poor you know, dog that begins to bite and chase and bark at its tail. It just goes and goes until it wears itself out. The interesting thing about our hearts and our minds when emotions have a hold of us, the heart feeds the mind and then the mind feeds the heart and the heart feeds the mind and it just goes like this and you feel like a raggedy Ann or Andy doll, you know? You're just torn apart. Um... I don't know if I should reveal this or not, but I, it's, you're, oh, well, yeah, yeah, say, my expense, thank you. Yes, be transparent. You go for it, pastor. When I think of somebody being torn apart and putting their life back together and torn apart and putting their life back together, uh, because my mind, if you know me, I have a very uh, odd mind. I see things in, I see cartoons all the time. I see Caption bobbles over people's heads with words. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm insane. There's no doubt about it. Um, but this is not approved for all the audiences, but there's that cartoon that's called, I think, Nightmare Before Christmas. And there's this, there's this poor w- girl named Sally that has been torn apart by life and sewed back together and torn torn apart. And you know what? She stands there and everything has been stitched back together. Her mouth, her head, her eyes have been put back in. She's got stitches around her ears. Her arms have been re-stitched. You can see the thread. And when when I see Sally, I see what the world does to people. And this world church is evil and it's able to be manipulated by spiritual powers and demonic strongholds that are beyond us we are no match for satan in the realm of the darkness don't let anyone tell you you just you rebuke him did you know that never the bible never says that Oh, really? I saw a Christian TV program that said, you, you say, I rebuke you, Satan. That's not in the Bible. The Bible says that we are to supposed to say, the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you, Satan. Amen. There's a big difference in that. There's a big difference. If you do it the other way, you're going to look like Sally. <laughs> We're no match for the enemy. That's, look, God gives us pictures like this all the time. When a little kid is scared, a little kid is so smart. No kid who's, no little kid scared stands there, you know, when they get terrified. All right, come on. You want a piece of me? They don't do that. They run behind the knees of their mom or dad. And they grab onto the mom and dad's thigh and they look around from the knees. They're safe there. That's what we're supposed to do. All the time. 
Psalm 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Do you believe that? That was weak. No, you don't. You don't. (laughs) Clearly, you don't. Well, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. The Bible says it. The Bible says this. God's word is true. God's word's happening right now. God's on his throne. His word will never fail forever, O Lord. Your word is established in heaven. God's not looking over a cloud right now at the recounting. He's not looking at ballot boxes. And don't get me wrong. I am not suggesting that God doesn't care. Oh, he cares. He's just not worried about it. You want to know why? Because he's got this. He's got everything. The dilemma comes for you and I. We think it's in hand and okay if it's going our way. See, I want God to answer this dilemma my way, and then I can understand it. God says, you need to dwell in my word, and you need to trust me, because I'm going to give you a peace that passes human understanding. And I'm going to start by garrisoning your heart because you're out of control. I, I'm going to come in. I'm going to get control of your heart. And God will do that. And God is doing it to you. He might be using this message right now. He might have used worship. He might have done it earlier today. Or for you, he might do it tomorrow or next. Look, if you want to wait till next week, that's your business. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Surrender now. Listen, just give up. Give up. He's got this. Amen. And you say, yeah, but what does this mean? We'll talk about this in a moment. 1 Thessalonians 2.17 says, But we, brethren, Paul now is speaking to them, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, Paul is lamenting that he's not been able to see the Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 2.17. Not in heart, Endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Paul is saying, I wanted to see you. I want to be with you guys. It's not happening right now. If I had my way, I'd be with you guys. Now listen to, how, listen to what happens here. Verse 18, therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and time again. But we were hindered by Satan. That's a heavy statement. You ever think about that in your own life? The answer is most often, no, I don't. Because we look at things naturally. And we begin to understand that, well, that's okay, I see that. Well, you know, that happens sometimes. And after all, he deserved it. And, well, I don't know why. If I would have, I would have done this. And we start thinking in our minds... And the anxiety begins. Because what we analyze and assess ain't happening. Thus something's wrong. And if you let that continue without realizing, wait a minute. The Bible tells me we are wrestling against demonic invisible powers. And that dark power is hindering us. Stands in opposition. All of you should read. Every single one of us, including your children, you should read it to your kids. Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Honestly, be honest. You're in church. How many of you read Screw Tape Letters? Raise your hand. That's not enough. You should master. How thick's the book? Am I accurate? About that big? The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. It's genius. You'll never live the same. The audio is great too, but it'll scare you. That guy's voice is scary, but it's fantastic. (laughs) Yes, it's true. I have the audio as well, and it's like, wow. It's brilliant. Talks about the never sleeping, never resting, always conniving, always plotting. Satanic 
privates and captains and corporals and lieutenants that have been dispatched by the realm of darkness assigned to you to mess with you. And C.S. Lewis can only do it the way C.S. Lewis can do it. And you'll never look at anyone else the same after that either. <laughs> no, it's like you know, somebody you totally know and love, and they love God, and, and they're, they're like acting, what? What are you doing? And the enemy's, the enemy's shooting what the Bible says are fiery darts. The Bible says take up the shield of faith that you might stop those things. Say, so what are the fiery darts? Satan, imagine, takes out an arrow, dips it in, dips it in dumb. He's gonna, he dips it in some dumb. That guy, it looks like that guy is just about ready to make a decision. And he shoots dumb at you, and you're just about ready to do the wise thing, and you stop, and you go... Maybe I should lick that wall socket after all. <laughs> it doesn't have to be something that, that dumb. It could be something more dumb, like, I'll give him my number. I don't know who he is, but something crazy. So, and then you say, you know this happened because then you go, why did I do that? That's, you can't blame the enemy, though. That's his job. He's the best devil there'll ever be. That's what he does. We listen to that stuff. Why? Because we don't bring every thought under the captivity of Christ. And we don't raise the shield of faith to stop the hit. The amazing thing is, if we're walking in the Spirit, and this thought comes like this, panic! If you don't raise your shield, your emotions are going to kick in. And your thoughts are going to go. And you're going to look like a dog over there going in a circle. And God is saying, what are, you, what, are, what are we doing here? We need to go this way. The battle's over there. You're not in circles. battle's over here. Let's go. And we're in a battle. Psalm 83, 1 says, do not keep silent, O God. Do you, do you feel like that? Did anybody feel like that tonight? It's cute that you said yes, but it's only been like 20 hours <laughs> that things have been like weird. So, Lord, give us patience, <laughs> right? But do not keep silent, O God, the psalmist cries out. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. I'm going to say something about this in a minute. They have taken crafty counsel against you and your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from becoming a nation. Psalm 83. So everybody's hearts and minds, all the media, the world, literally, the world is on pins and needles right now. I'm going to encourage you tonight, let's just do it right now for fun, to prove, to prove the point where we're going. Get out your, get out your phone, get it out, get, get ready to Google, <laughs> use whatever you use, Safari, what, do you, what are the other things out there? Um, <laughs> Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> Whatever you use, get ready. And I want you to type in, let's, let's try this. Um, type in, uh, numerically, numbers, type in 138,000 ballots. Watch this, everybody. Type it in, hit, hit return. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Raise your hand when you have a, um, a search. When you've got, what, what's at the top? What, somebody, somebody tell me the headline of the first, first hit at the top. No, Joe Biden was not. Wait, 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 I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Right here in the blue. Joe Biden was not suddenly awarded 138,000 votes. 
No, Joe Biden was not awarded 100, 138,000 votes. That's the, what's the second search? Raise your hand. Second search, right here. No, Joe Biden did not magically find votes in Michigan. No, Joe Biden did not magically find the 138,000 votes in Michigan. Next search, number three, somebody, right there, Nick. Trump retweets false claim that Biden got 138,000 votes in Michigan. Mysterious votes. Anybody have Vox? Did it pop up near the top? By the way, ladies and gentlemen, everybody online, hello. If you're doing it at home, look at the organizations that first came up on your search. What, what populates the first page? Listen, Vox which is a fraudulent news source, okay? New York Times, which is a fraudulent newspaper. CNN, which is fraudulent, fake, what's? Freep? Never heard of Freep, but it doesn't even sound good, so I'm gonna say it's no good. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay? All right, check this out. If you are the run-of-the-mill lemming, type of individual, you typed in 138,000 votes, and on the first page you look, second, third page you look, and it's all about Trump freaking out, doing stupid stuff, retweeting and complaining about 138,000 votes, uh, th this mysterious thing, ha <laughs> ha, what a joke, blah blah, excuse me, guess what? There are 138,000 ballots that are now in the custody of the federal government. Wait, wait, wait for it. As the investigation now begins all over the United States, not all, not, no, that's not yet all over the United States, about five states. Department of Justice are already on the ground working. Okay, listen. 138,000 votes arrived at 2.38 a.m. this morning in Michigan. Are you sitting down? 100% of them were for Joe Biden. Thank God it's in, it's in, in federal investigators' hands right now. Tonight... As local as Chino Hills and across the United States, heavily in a state called Arizona, people were, people were to vote and they had a bucket, a, 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 a bucket of ballpoint pens that said new and ballpoint pen box that said used for voting. As you approached to vote, people in official lime green vests at the polling stations, who were volunteers, said, you know what, don't use those, use these Sharpie pens. It, by the way, it happened here in this city yesterday. And the voter was given a Sharpie pen, and the voter used the Sharpie pen. And then, listen, Sharpie pen votes are rejected automatically. Some of you voted with the Sharpie pen. Your vote's been rejected. Oh, by the way, side, side note. We delivered to the four county board of registrar's offices from this church safely and for real, 11,747 <laughs> ballots because of you. So watch out. Yeah, no Sharpies either, not a one. So be careful right now. If you should even listen to news, I am now officially on the record condemning Fox News. They're worthless. 
They are garbage. In fact, in fact, do us a favor. Tucker Carlson, uh, Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, do us a favor. Leave those guys now. Go and buy OAN and make it a real TV station. You got the money, you can do it. Yeah, listen. I know, this is true. Daily Wire, Daily Wire is really expanding, big time. And Daily Wire, don't be surprised if, the, if Daily Wire comes to save the day when it comes to getting reliable news. Um, but if it's on your television set, you can no longer listen to it. In fact, it's almost 8 o'clock. I don't know if this is in the public news yet. About an hour and a half ago, federal investigators are in Phoenix. And when they began looking around, when they began opening up closets and, and, and going through drawers and trash cans at voting precincts today, seventy. Hang on. Over seventy thousand ballots were found. Wait. And out of the 70,000 ballots that were found, 44,893 were votes for President Trump. The balance, the rest were for Biden. That's a, that's a big deal. You're going to see more of that stuff happening. Not once, uncharacteristically, by the way, I kept saying at home, you know how we all talk to the TV? Yes. <laughs> so I'm watching. I gave up on Fox News. I gave up on Fox News so hard, so hard, so fast <laughs> that I watched CNN. That's how bad it was. <laughs> and I noticed when I went to CNN, my, my, Jake Tapper, he's not... In 26, that guy was like throwing up blood. He was freaking out. His head was spinning around. He's so calm. He's even got a smile tonight. Did you notice that? And David Axelrod, he's so calm. In fact, last night, Joe Biden was calm. The whole day he was calm. He was very calm, very confident. We got this. Dana Bash, she's so calm. I told my family, Man, I don't know. They're either handing around really good drugs at CNN tonight, or they know something. Did you notice that? And what did they say all night long? I'm texting congressmen. I'm texting, uh, texting other political people I know. Uh, they just said it again. This is the eighth time that they've all said, don't worry. Don't worry. We're just going to keep counting. Oh, we know that Trump is up over here. Literally, John King, don't worry, we're just going to keep counting. Really? Rodeo Drive, Robertson, La Cienega, Hollywood, Bel Air. Boarded up. They boarded it up, started boarding it up on Monday morning. News was there. Why are you boarding up everything? Violence. 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 Has there been any violence? Not yet, because right now Joe's winning. Are you hearing me? Look, if we lose, we go to work tomorrow morning. We've got families to feed. We're not idiots. We don't riot. We have lawns to mow. But Biden's winning, so there's no riots. 
You li listen. When this turns around, oh, there's going to be riots. But don't worry, they won't last long. Which leads me to some things that I want to share with you tonight. God says in Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse 20, he begins by saying that he's in charge. Now listen, I want you to think now. God says, I raise up kings and I pull them down. Amen. We do not understand the mind of God regarding every king that goes up and down in every nation of all time. I don't understand how God works in raising up, for example, a woman and her daughter tonight shared with me how they escaped their country under the regime of Pol Pot. I don't understand how God allows a Pol Pot to come into power. But he, at the least, knows about it. <laughs> I don't understand why God puts in power the people that he does and takes people out of power the way that he does. But God does it. Are you hearing me? Yes. In 2016, nobody knows the sting of this reality in the United States, better or worse than Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I literally should have brought to you, I, was, I had it in my hand yesterday, and I didn't know I was going to say this right now, but I have a Newsweek magazine that I own that was smuggled out of New York into my hands. It's, it's got to be worth a hundred zillion dollars. It has on the cover, and I'm not kidding. Madam President, bottom right hand corner, Newsweek magazine, how Hillary Clinton became the first female president in American history. From cover to cover, it's one interview after another, already written, of how she, why she picked that dress, when, what did you feel like when you saw, heard the announcement, once you knew the presidency was yours, what did Chelsea say, what did Bill say, I own it, I have it. No, you know, I'll take, I can take pictures of it and post it, but you ain't, you, you ain't touching it, I gotta put it in a safe deposit box. Something else happened. No, something else happened. Somebody else got elected. Shocked the world. Right? How did that happen? God did that. Listen, listen. Barack Obama got elected twice. How did that happen? God did that. God did that. God did that. God, did that. God says, I raise up kings and I take kings down. The Republican Party doesn't do that. The Democrat Party doesn't do that. You campaign, you vote, you, you do what you do. But the result is in the hands of God. Oh my goodness, today, did you know today? I forget what state it was. Some congressman or senator, congressman I think, won. He won his race. He was elected. You say, okay. He died two weeks ago from COVID. I'm serious. So the Republican Party is going to appoint a replacement person in his place. I guess that's the way they do it. I don't know. How did that happen? I don't know. Don't say, oh, COVID. <laughs> COVID, didn't, COVID didn't say, I don't want that guy in office. I'm taking him out. Listen, I'm not even saying God used COVID. What I am saying is, God knew that that guy was not going to be sworn into office. How come? 
You'll never know. I'll never know. So listen, a lot of people are biting their nails right now and freaking out. I want to make this really clear to all of you, and especially you guys. I am not a prophet, and I have no prophetic, I have no crystal ball, I have no rabbit's foot. (laughs) I'm just thinking Bible here. When I see my Bible, a king, when God puts a king in power, a Nebuchadnezzar, a David, Cyrus, pick them, I don't care, Artaxerxes, Ahasuerus, I don't care, pick one. God puts them into power. You know how he does it? He just does it. They either get knighted or somebody says, your bloodline, you're up. <laughs> you're the kid. Uh, are you with me? Are you following this? Yes. That's what God, God, God puts them in and God takes them out. How do they go out? They slip on a banana peeling. <laughs> no, seriously, think. How do kings leave office? They get killed in battle? King Saul, right? 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 David fought more battles than Saul did. Why did David survive the battles and not Saul? God. David died of old age. That's how God removes kings. They die of old age. You want to know, listen, you want to know why Trump survived COVID? God. Was it Alec Baldwin and and Bruce Springsteen that said something to the effect, I hope he dies? Can you imagine saying that? Can you imagine saying, I hope Obama Obama dies? Can you imagine? You'd be, wow. Our our nation is racist because you can never say that. Can you imagine saying, oh, you know, Joe Biden? Can you imagine? Oh, no, but here's the deal. This world's evil, man. And we're, in, we're battling spiritual invisible powers. Right. And here's the thing. If God wants to remove Trump, you think God's got to cheat to remove Trump? No. Listen, stop. Listen, think. What's going on right now in our nation? Massive cheating is being exposed. And you're going to see a lot of it for the next four weeks. Listen. I'm sure when Trump said, let's drain the swamp, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't know it was going to be this murky. <laughs> He should have said, let's drain the swamp to this part. (laughs) So now it's at the bottom. We are not going to talk about scorecard. We are not going to talk about hammer. Not going to talk about it. But let me tell you something. If I understand my Bible, God never has to use cheating, sin, or evil, manipulation, conniving, thievery, man's ways to remove a king. If God wants Trump out, he's going to lose the election fair and square, not by man's cheating. God will never use evil to do his bidding. As a, I'm, not, I'm only talking to the Christians tonight. No Christian can understand what I'm talking about. No Christian can understand what I'm talking about. You have to be a Christian to get this. This is like code. God's righteous. He's just. He doesn't use Sharpies. He doesn't use, listen, right now there is a, several polling stations in Michigan that were boarded up by the workers and they're not letting federal agents in to a federal polling station. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, something smells in River City. And guess what? It's going to come out. And it's coming out. If God, if God wants Joe Biden to be president, all the cheating is going to be exposed and all the cheating is going to be erased out of the way. And then there's going to be fair and square real numbers. And Joe wins. And that's awesome. 
Because guess what? We take it from the hand of God. If all of the cheatings removed, all the votes are counted and they're real ones and they're honest ones, meaning they're not arriving tonight. Hello. And if Trump wins, it's the same sovereign hand of God that would have put Joe in. Now, here's the deal. Here's where we'll end with this. This, this is where my mind goes. Now, God, I know you can do anything, and I'm not supposed to be anxious about anything. And I can't understand all this. I don't, I'm, I, don't have, I don't have the skill set. I'm supposed to trust you. I'm supposed to pray. Listen, people, here's my big concern. Number one concern is that you don't pray. We prayed leading up to the election. That was practice. Because now it's obvious the demonic power is at work, and they're working OT right now. And listen, we need to pray now like never before. Amen. And, I, man, I got to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I was just on the phone with a White House aide while you were doing worship. And do you know what that phone call was about? The phone call was, and I'm quoting, the family has asked us all to pray and not to stop. This is not human. Amen. So that's... Don't, don't settle back and say, I'm a Christian, praise the Lord. And the attorneys, they'll take care of all that stuff. There's not an attorney skilled to deal with something that's got six wings and fangs and it, it is invisible. You know why Satan's upset? Because the team that he controls and their worldview, I'm sorry, I'm telling you right now. If you, if you literally adhere to the Democrat platform, then I'm going to give you a slice of grace and believe that you've never read it. Because if you've read it, then there ain't no way you can honor the God of heaven and the Bible. It's impossible. It is literally impossible. It is so demonic. If you don't like that, prove me wrong. If you don't like what I just said, prove me wrong. So here's what's up. This is not about people. This is not about blue and red. It's not about donkeys and elephants. This is not about parties. This is about satanic realms being upset because babies may not be murdered anymore. This is the enemy powers upset because if Trump wins, Israel still has a friend in the earth. This isn't about Trump. It's not about him. It's God setting up kings and taking down kings. And I'm submitting to you tonight, if God wants Trump out, then he'll have a relapse of COVID or he will slip on a banana. But God is not going to hire the Democrat Party to take Trump out because God doesn't work with sin. He doesn't do that. And if you read your Bible, you'll understand that when God wants to take down a king or remove a king, they don't get reelected. Or another king takes their place. Or they get sick, they die. But God doesn't cheat and God doesn't steal. Amen. I don't know what kind of God you worship, but if you think your God does that, you got the wrong one, man. I'm here to tell you, wake up, you need to smell something. Because that's not the God of the Bible. Amen. He doesn't do this. The God of the Bible is not going to say, hide those ballots. Hide <laughs> Board up the doors. Here, use a Sharpie pen. God doesn't do that. So, who's going to win? Whoever God, listen, whoever God appoints to us. Based on what? Based on God having told us, if my people who called by my name 
will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll heal their land. That's the big problem. We shared that last night in the prayer meeting. My big concern is this. Did I pray? Did I repent? Is what's happening right now a reflection of the apathy of the church? Is that, is that why there's no decision? Are you hearing me? When there are, when there are uh, hirelings, I call them hirelings, who make big money, not all of them, but some I'm thinking about make big money, who had never addressed these kinds of issues, nor did they encourage their people to vote righteously because they wouldn't get involved because they're cowards, because they're hirelings. Listen, they're dangerous. They wouldn't speak up to save a baby's life through the means and mechanisms by which God has given us, and that's through a republic, which if you want to save babies' lives, you vote for people who want to save babies' lives. But they wouldn't talk about it. So I believe this. I believe right now this is what's happening. This whole COVID thing, the year 2020, masks, economy, political leaders, all of this, it's obvious to me now, all of this has been used by God, not sent by God, used by God to test this nation, and we have failed. This nation has failed. Our governments predominantly have failed. The people we have voted for predominantly have, not all of them. And if you think I'm making this up, the worst sad report card of all is our faith has failed. And we have become bumbling fools, cowering in fear. We have seen the shadow of the boogeyman. And we dropped our shield, we dropped our sword, we took off the armor, and we ran away. I will not name his name. A pastor today said to me, it's time now for the church to wake up and be strong and move ahead and, be, and go forward. And I, I keep reaching for my phone. I left it in the back. I responded and I said, the church, where is the church? The pulpit has been abandoned. The shepherds have left their flock. And none of them who have abandoned their flock no longer have a voice to speak or say anything to anyone ever again on courage or fear or faith or warfare. They're silent. Their voice, their, listen, like Sally, their mouth has been stitched shut by the fear that they allowed to conquer their pulpit and thereby subject their people to the wolves of politics, to the wolves of culture, to the wolves of, of you name it. Is it over for the church? I don't know. I don't know. Look, the gates of hell will never prevail against his church. Okay? We just need to find where his church meets. Because never again fall for some joke of a cool graphic, a slick name, and the right kind of lighting, and the right kind of talk, and how they hold their microphone and write their books when God's not in the house. Because this is a commentary on the church in America. We need to repent. We need to see God. I believe, I, 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 I believe that this election will be settled when the church gets her act together. It's not going to happen through attorneys. God may use them, but God's waiting for the church. And I wrote myself a note today, and it, it's just, it says, all it says is, I'm waiting. 
That's from God to my heart. I'm waiting. Because right now everyone's saying, when is this going to end? When are we going to know? And God is saying, I'm waiting. So, strong, I know, strong, yeah, but um, it's got to be true. I'm telling you right now. I just thank God. Listen, when, when my God is done with governors and, and city councilmen and mayors and, and presidents and senators and congressmen, when he's done with them, they're done. He's done with them. They term out or he's done or they choke or something. I don't know, but he's done with them. He's done with them. He raises them up. He pulls them down. Right, that's right. I just thank God that he doesn't resort to cheating and stealing because he's not, he's not evil. Amen. He's good. So church, we need to pray in confidence. Yes. Yes. I, look, I, I, have, I have absolute confidence how it could turn out. I'm not worried about the numbers. I have my faith in Jesus. Amen. I don't have faith. I don't have faith in, in the church in America. I don't have faith in the church. I have faith in Jesus. Amen. Father, we, we praise you tonight. We humble ourselves tonight, Lord God. We ask you in Jesus' name, Father, that you'd forgive us. As a people, almighty oh God, please. God, you are pro-life. And one man is, and one man is not. Would you be pro-life for us? Jesus, Lord, one man is for Israel, one is not. You are for Israel. Lord, one man is for our military and our police, and the other is not. You are. What will we decide? What message will we send you? Jesus, Forgive us as a people. We have slept when we should have been awake. We've played when we should have been praying. We have faltered between two opinions. And we have sown to the wind. And we're asking for your forgiveness. Lord, I pray tonight for the salvation of Joe Biden, God, that you'd touch his soul. All he knows is his version of Catholicism. He doesn't know you personally. Father, we pray for Kamala Harris. She's had such a crazy... Uh, Exposure to spiritual things, but none the truth. And so they have their agendas and they have their thoughts and their ways. Without you, Lord, we'd be just like them. Save them. Father, tonight... President Trump is entertaining in his mind. I'm sure it's almost impossible for him to entertain this in his mind, but rumor has it he's never lost anything before. And God, I just pray that tonight he would lose himself and find you tonight. Father, that you'd visit him in his dreams. God, that you would take this very strong and able man who doesn't lean on anybody to go to his knees. Lord, may he collapse in your arms. Father, we pray for Melania. We know that she does love you. She loves your Bible. She loves your people. She's one of us. I can't imagine, Lord, the burden she's carrying right now. Strengthen her. I'm sure Baron is asking, what's going on? What's happening? Save and bless Baron. 
Father, I thank Lord God. I, and you know, Lord, me, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with you out back. It's like you did it with Jacob, and now you're having to do it with me. I just, Lord, Mike Pompeo is one of the most precious people in the world I know. And I just can't imagine him not being the Secretary of State. Lord, on his desk, his Bible's wide open. He's a man of prayer. He loves your word. He can preach your word. I'm so proud of him. Such a good man, him and Susan. Such good people. Lord, have you brought Mike Pompeo to be Secretary of State only for that to end now? Have you brought, Lord... Amy Coney Barrett into the onto the court and that's it. It's we're done. Got it. We in this room, we're still pro-life here. We know that you're pro-life. Please, God, have mercy. And Lord, we pray tonight for such an amazing, faithful man, a good man, a wonderful. Sunday school teacher, Vice President Mike Pence. Lord, I believe you brought him to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I know, Lord, you're sovereign and you can remove people at any given second. You do every day. But Father, as we cried out to you last night here in this place, we asked you to remember the covenant of our pilgrim fathers and that you would renew that covenant. And so, Father, I ask with my brothers and my sisters tonight that the light of truth would shine unto every state right now. That you'd expose all wrong, all that's evil, all that's wrong. Lord, this is not a Republican or a Democrat prayer. If there's Republican or Democrat shenanigans, expose it. You're not a Republican. And you're not a Democrat. You're God. Shine your light of holiness, righteousness, justice. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you, Lord God, that you'd give us a president and an administration that is pro-Israel, pro-life, pro-religious freedom, pro-police, pro-military, pro-jobs, pro-Hispanic, pro-black, pro-every other color imaginable. Because you're good. Church, let's stand as we close in this song. And... Um, I'm sorry for freaking out. I'm not under any influence of anything. I have not taken any drugs in 62 years. I'm... We, the, the church... I just have a super high view of the church. I believe that when God's people are walking in light, walking in the truth, I don't believe there's any power on earth that can stop the church of God. And... And I, I, I want to see, you do too, you want to see the church alive and vibrant and, and living out her calling until he calls us up. And man, I pray he calls us up tonight. Wouldn't that be great? Let's sing this song in closing together. God bless you guys.
Amen. God bless you as you go. Chase to